Artificial intelligence or AI tools is one of the most talked about things on the internet right now. From mid-journey to chat GPT, people are using this software for pretty much anything in their lives right now. Business, school, or even just a hobby like I am with YouTube. But today, we're going to be talking about eye redirection software that you get on NVIDIA Maxine and NVIDIA Broadcast. I've previously made videos on how to install these into your computer and how to use them. But today, we're going to go through all the pros and cons of the eye redirection software, go through Broadcast and Maxine, and show you how to get the best out of them both. And at the end, we'll come to our conclusion, is it cool or is it cursed? But before we get to those pros and cons, we'll give you a little bit of a backstory and show you how it actually works. As you can see here on the left, I've got my normal eyes and on the right, I have my redirected eyes. I'm not even looking at the camera as you can see, but on this one on the right, my eyes are looking at you the whole time. So what you can see here, this is NVIDIA Maxine. It is very simple. It gives you an original face and then a new face. You can make it so it only does one, but I like having both so I can show you in these videos what it was before and what it is now. As you can see here behind me, that is NVIDIA Broadcast. There is drop-down boxes and actual application that looks really nice. The effects can be turned on and off. So from the face value, this one actually looks a lot better, but we'll get into the actual pros and cons as we go. So these two applications have both been made by NVIDIA. This is the only company that I've seen dabbling into this AI technology. So because of this, if you do not have one of those compatible graphics cards, these applications will not work. So this includes Apple's and nearly any laptop that is not backed by NVIDIA. So we'll get into those pros and cons. We'll start with the pros, hey? So the first one is eye contact. Obviously, eye contact gets you better engagement. People want to watch because it actually looks like you're looking at them. If you're reading from a script, people think you're more knowledgeable because you're not read. It doesn't look like you're reading anything because your eyes are staying straight at the webcam instead of going side to side. Some people really struggle with actually talking to the webcam, even without a script. It is really hard to look at the webcam and just continually talk. So this will help people like that, make their audiences feel much, much more engaged. So that's a few pros all in one, and they're, they're, they're really meaningful. Like obviously engagement and looking at your audience is really important when making videos or doing a talk over Zoom. So that takes us to another point. This can be used in Zoom, Google Meets, Restream, whatever else. It can be used straight into there. Put it into OBS start your virtual camera and away you go so another pro this can be done live like i'm doing right now my eyes are getting regazed the whole time or you can do it in post-production you can put this through nvidia maxine and it will spit out an eye redirected video of what you have put in there the big con of this is say if your video is 1.6 gigabytes which i've done for someone it was about a 15 minute video it went all the way up to 32 gig so it it absolutely makes your video so much bigger. So you wouldn't think that this has many downsides, but when I'm trying to send that back to someone, it took five hours for me to upload that onto the Google Drive. Maybe there's a better way to do it and I will find that out. But for now, a 32 gigabyte video is enormous and really hard to send to anyone else. On that point, if you do want your videos transferred from normal to the eyes looking at the webcam the other time, just get in contact with me. I have been doing this for people very sporadically, but I'm going to actually launch my Discord, which I'll link down below. It'll have all the prices there for what you need done. I should be able to do most things in one or two days and get them back to you pretty fast. So we'll head over to the cons now. Obviously, only being on NVIDIA is a massive con. Most people don't go out just to buy a graphics card so they can do this with their eyes. Yes, I've found some cheap ones, which I have in the links down below, which you can click on and have a look. Even the cheapest ones are getting up close to $1,000, which is out of most people's price range just to buy a graphics card so they can redirect their eyes. But as I have said before, if you have a camera on your phone and someone you know or me that has an NVIDIA graphics card that can do it, you can send it to them and you can do the eye redirection in post. So another con is it can look really weird. If you aren't looking close enough to the webcam, your eyes will flutter in and out and it will probably look worse than you reading the script side to side and I've had this with a few people when they've sent them to me they haven't had the script close enough and it, it's right on the cusp so if you look here I'm gonna pull my eyes across and when I get to there as you can see it goes away and I'm, if I'm right on the cusp it will just keep flickering backwards and forwards and that will look really bad in your video and if you're doing this in post and you haven't noticed that is a lot of time and effort that you've gone into where it's not actually going to work so another con if you wear glasses and you have this light as most people do behind their webcam it will shine off your glasses and may affect the eye redirection 
and just the eye redirection going through a piece of glass makes it a little bit a little bit weird and I know most people will need their glasses to read the script but if you can get contacts for when you're doing stuff like this it will work a hundred times better so another con that I have is if you're on a zoom meeting sometimes it can be a little bit overbearing if you have it turned on the whole time because obviously it's not natural to continually look at someone in the eyes for the for half an hour so it can be a little bit too much if you are going to use it for zoom meetings and stuff make sure you try out nvidia broadcast first it's easier to use and you can turn it on and off when you want so you're not just sitting there looking at your computer doing nothing but your eyes are right on the webcam like the whole time so we'll go into some pros and cons between broadcast and maxine because they do work just a little bit differently and have some benefits from either one so i'll start with broadcast pros obviously it is an actual application you can use it you can modify stuff you can choose which camera it comes from it's all really easy to use but on the other hand, I don't believe that its eye redirection is anywhere near as good as Maxine's. So with Maxine's, I can look a lot further and it will bring it in and it still looks really good. Also with broadcast, you can do stuff with your speakers, your microphone, you can blur your background and do a few other things. So then when you go into your Zoom call, everything is already done. You don't need to worry about Zoom's really crappy effects and stuff like that. So on Maxine, as I said, it, the eye redirection software I feel works a hundred times better but it is really hard to set up. It is still in development, which means that you need to go in and input code into its notebook to make it actually work. So people are really intrigued by this, but really struggle with writing code. And if you do something like literally one letter to different, it nothing will work. On my video that has 80,000 views, I have like over a thousand comments of me helping people make sure they've done it properly. Also with Maxine, you do lose a fair bit of video quality, but if you're using OBS, you can go in and just add a few filters and make it look a hundred times better, which I'm going to make a video on that very soon. Some quick fix filters to make your video look a lot cleaner and crisper rather than washed out. So one more pro with Maxine is that it is where you can do your post-production changes. You just need to change the code a little bit and then you can input a video into NVIDIA Maxine and it will do the change for you in the post-production, as I said. Its major con though is that it turns a 1.6 gigabyte video into a 32 gigabyte video, which is absolutely absurd, but it does the job. So there's all the pros and cons, but I'll give you a couple tips for when you are doing the video. As I said before, make sure the script is as high as and as close to the webcam as possible. I like it to be just below because most people have their webcam just above their computer. So as I said, adding those couple little filters on OBS will make your Maxine and your broadcast look a hundred times better. Watch out for that video. Make sure you hit that bell down below so you don't miss that when it comes out. Also with Maxine, you need to crop your video just to make sure you don't see up the top there, it has like gaze redirection and stuff like that. It's really easy to crop in OBS. Before going in and doing any post-production videos, make sure you test drive it. Do a 10 to 20 second video of all the things that you feel like you're going to do within that video. Then go and put that through NVIDIA Maxine and make sure it works the way you want it to. Because you don't want to put in the effort of a 15 minute video and then go back and watch it and, then, and pretty much all of it is unusable. That is just a waste of time. So make sure you go and practice everything you're going to do before you go and throw it into a full-blown video. If after watching this and watching other videos and you're still struggling to get this onto your computer, make sure you head over to the Discord, hit me up on there, or even hit me in a comment here and we can chat about it and I can try and help you as best as possible. But we'll get to this last part now. Is this AI technology cool or is it cursed? So as I said, make sure you practice. If you haven't practiced it, this can look very cursed. Your eyes and that can look really weird as you can see right here my fingers behind my eye there's some really weird limitations that it has and the just look at that obviously you're not going to do that in videos but it looks really weird and as i said it can be cursed in that aspect but on the other hand if this software is used correctly and you have practiced and you putting everything into place like i've told you it can be a really great tool you'll up your retention on all your videos your audience will be more engaged and you can use this in your zoom meeting so the people that you're talking to really think that you know what you're talking about even though you're reading off a script it's a really really cool little tool and i really love it i don't use it all the time but i've been using it on this video just so you can see what it looks like when someone is actually shooting a video for you if you really like the sound of this software and want to learn how to put it on your computer, I will put the links to both of my videos up here, plus a couple of others to really sort you out. Go through them, watch them all. If you need help, as I said, get in contact. But that is it for today, guys, and thanks for listening.